Hi, Laura Silve Decor Consultant here. I hope you're having a great day. You've asked and I'm going to answer, how did we survive this winter? With the coldest February on record, every time I turned on CBC Radio I was hearing about everybody other everybody else's sticks and bricks homes freezing, pipes still froze and people carting their buckets of water upstairs to defrost in their bathtubs so they'd have water to flush their toilet or brush their teeth. Chad and I are living in an RV, which everybody told us you can't do in the winter time, and we've had none of those issues. I want to share with you today how we've achieved that in hopes that uh, you can be successful too. All right, so let's start with a few of our supplies, okay? The number one thing I can say to RVers, and I'm sure a lot of you have seen on my posts on Facebook, spray foam the underneath of your trailer. So don't do the tip outs for obvious reasons. You wouldn't be able to put them back in. Um, but make sure you do the underneath of the trailer's frame as well as the gray and black water tanks all the way up to the valve. Okay, so the valve stem, you wanna ensure that that's spray foamed. Do not spray foam the valve that you're gonna pull. Um, the spray foam, I am convinced, is, is has been what made the difference for Chad and I this winter in having a fully functioning plumbing system, right? So we've been able to run water for our dishes, to wash our hair, to have showers, to flush the toilet. We've been able to discharge our black water tank. So, you know, we've been able to use our trailer like a, like a house. A lot of the people in the park we're at now have skirts as well. A lot of those have frozen over even though they have skirts, okay? They have not spray foamed their tanks. We've come out of the coldest February, I think it was like on average minus 20 something. We had many weeks where it was minus 30, 35. We had zero f uh, freezing in the tanks. So that's my biggest tip right there, spray foam underneath. Okay, then we skirted. So many different skirt ideas. There's fabric, canvas fabric, vinyl uh, fabric skirting you can get. Some people just threw up some dingy plywood. Chad and I wanted to go a route that would add more R value, that would be more sealed, um, and wouldn't be vulnerable to high winds. So I came up with a, an idea that I hoped would work, and it has. I, we bought one inch styrofoam panels that you can get at your home home hardware, local store, whichever, um, Home Depot, whatever home improvement store you'd like. They're one inch, it's got green on one side and silver on the other side. And then we used uh, siding molding, uh, a J molding on the top of the styrofoam and an F molding on the bottom of the styrofoam. So essentially the styrofoam fits in between those two uh, vinyl moldings, right? So it becomes rigid. How we attach those moldings uh, to the trailer and to the ground are as follows. So the J molding is held held in place with tap uh, self tapping screws, not into the walls of our trailer, not not into the floor. It's done on the the decorative skirting that surrounds. Uh, like I guess a fender, it would be similar to a fender of a car that surrounds the trailer. Okay, so we, we've permanently attached that J molding because we're going to put up our skirt in the summer. It just looks nice and gives us extra storage. And then the F molding that runs along the bottom, we're parked on a pad that's gravel. So that the F molding has holes in it and we tacked it down with six inch spikes about every 12 inches from the inside underneath the unit. Any of the seams of the styrofoam, they have been uh, tuck taped with this ver vapor barrier tape, tuck tape, which is incredible stuff. Um, and then on the outside, we used white duct tape um, because we painted the skirt white. So it just, it just blends, it, it looks nice. It looks very clean, this look. And I, I have posted a picture of it on my Facebook page if you wanted to take a look. We had 100 kilometer an hour winds here back in November. Our neighbor two doors down who has a skirt made of the same styrofoam um, put together a little differently than ours, it blew away, okay? So, I mean, we felt really bad for him. Luckily, ours has stayed intact and it's still intact today and it's March 10th. So we've done really well with the skirt, happy about that. Getting to the, making our way into the inside. This stuff here, it's bubble wrap with like aluminum on both sides. It comes in a roll in your hardware store. I'm not sure what it's called exactly. 
But um, we use this on the inside doors of our basement and our garage. So, you know, imagine like that's the door and then we took the tuck tape and sealed along there. So that just helps retain the heat that we were putting into our basement space. All right, so essentially what we did in our bedroom, there are two heat uh, furnace ducts, heating ducts. And I said to Chad, I think we can get away with one because we have a small electrical heater up in our bedroom as well. And I said, what if we directed that heat duct down into the basement? So every time our furnace is on, our basement area and our garage area are being constantly heated. So essentially that's protecting our plumbing, our hot water tank. It's also saving energy for us because we, we've done that. We don't have to have our hot water tank on 24 seven because it's, it's in an environment where it's between 70 and 75 degrees. Okay. So if you've got a fifth wheel or your trailer it has the capability of doing that, I recommend you do that too. So just redirect a heat duct down into the space. Okay. Now let's go into the inside. Let's start with my, my, my most favorite they're, they're noodles. They're like pool noodles, but miniature versions. I call them styrofoam noodles. The people at the home, uh, home improvement stores look at me like I'm crazy. They call it weather stripping. Anyway, it comes in many different sizes. This is small and this is medium. In our tip out, lots of drafts come in there. So these noodles were put in from the outside through the weather stripping that surrounds the tip out and it was also put in along the threshold floor to stop the draft from coming in there. Reusable, removable, easy peasy. Highly recommend and not terribly expensive either. Anywhere between six and seven dollars a bag. We have lots. We're prepared. This stuff we also used along the tip out on the inside. So You'll know on the left and right side of your tip out, you'll have about four inches, right, that are exposed, like the outside is exposed to the inside. We put this uh, reflective barrier there and tuck tape the sides. So, you know, it really stopped, um, prevented a lot of condensation from coming in and of course the drafts. All right, let's talk about window protection because <laughs> What I've learned in this is like million dollar, I'm giving you a gift right now, okay? I'm giving you a gift. Because you know, I, I did a lot of research online uh, for getting your RV ready. They say you gotta plastic your windows, just use the stuff you find at the home improvement store. Okay, so this is, you can find this at Walmart or once again, any home improvement store. It doesn't really matter the brand. It comes with plastic. There was enough in here to do our inside windows twice. And it comes with a roll of tape, double-sided tape. And after spending hours peeling the little things off, uh, the backing off the tape and putting it on, the first time I did the windows took me four hours and they all popped within a day. And what I mean by pop is the tape lets go uh, off the windowsill. Uh, because of condensation, because it's too cold, because it's crappy tape, whatever. Okay. So I got rid of that. And I did some more research. And I go on Amazon. And Amazon is raving. Raving about 3M. The tape is all the difference. 3M's tape. It's like a new generation. And you can do it on the outside windows. So then I spent another day with these kits that I ordered online doing the outside of the windows. Well, in 24 hours, the next generation tape popped too. Chad and I were at the verge of breaking up because I was insane. I was inconsolable with the amount of time and effort I put in. I couldn't figure out why the windows were not, why the tape wasn't working. You know, why am I being lied to by these companies, right? So I'm strolling around with our dogs in October around the park. And I'm, I'm at my wits end and I, I see Fernando, who's a gentleman I had spoken to before, and I tell him about my frustrations. And he says to me, you know, I'm, I'm, I used to be in the automotive industry and there's a tape, it's called Dum Dum Tape. I don't know the real name, he says, but I'm going to give you a piece and I want you to try it with your plastic. 
Fernando, if you're watching, mwah, I love you. This is Butyl Tape, folks, also known as Dum Dum Tape. So that's B-U-T-Y-L. It's an automotive tape. It's used for windshields, to hold in windshields. So it's strong, it's waterproof, and it remains flexible. That's the key. Okay, this is the secret to the success of the window plastic. So as you can see, it's about a quarter inch wide, about an eighth of an inch thick. And all you do is you run this in the track of the window seams. RVers, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. Okay, you run it right around. It's so beautiful. You can use a rolling pin, but I have a wallpaper seam roller. You roll it on. So you leave this tape on, you put it on the plastic. I'm just trying to see if I can demonstrate for you. And you roll it. Okay? And it's stuck. And then you peel off this in one swoop, not four hours of work. And you put on your window plastic and you roll the window plastic so it's secure onto the the dum dum tape, the butyl tape. You trim the excess, you shrink it down a little bit, not too much because you want to leave some flexibility, right, for when the drafts come. And voila, you're done. I think all the windows took when I got this dum dum tape, I think the windows took me an hour, right? between the cutting and putting this on. It has stayed in place. It is brilliant. You've seen my videos posted showing all of the frost buildup, the ice buildup that happens when you get past minus 20 in these, these temperatures. This stuff hasn't moved, it hasn't cracked, it's still flexible. And the brilliant thing about it, when we're ready to take it off, I can just peel it. It doesn't leave any residue. Um, it's fabulous. My only issue is it's not reusable. That's the that's the bummer about it. It costs anywhere between fifteen and thirty five bucks a roll, depending on your supplier. We've used four rolls. We've used it for a couple other projects, but four rolls to do all of our windows. Um, the plastic, of course, is not reusable. But anyway, haha, <laughs> dum dum, no more. Super smart on the window jobs. Okay. To help keep your condensation levels down, there's a few tools. The cheapest one, the chamois. Okay, you can get a chamois if you need to, but we found these at Canadian Tire. We got four out of one sheet. I think it was 12 bucks. You can wash them, dry them. Morning, noon, and night, and whenever in between, you go and you wipe down all your window sills. You get the condensation off. You wipe down your tip out seams. You wipe down the corner of your walls. You wipe down the top line of your walls. Wherever you see water, you wipe. If you get any sort of mold starting, and it happens on occasion, just get a little spray bottle with a quarter inch of bleach, the rest water, spray it and wipe, done. Okay? And the dehumidifier. This is the Evadry 1100. All right, probably the 2200 would have been a little bit better because it's a bit bigger. It's based on volume of space. No compressors in these dehumidifiers. Can you hear it? It is so, is whisper quiet. Tiny, compact, perfect for a tiny space. Easy to use. We have this one and another hanging one that actually doesn't have a fan on it. It just, the air goes through and it has the little, um, oh my gosh, I don't know what, to, silica sand type crystals. And whenever they turn pink, you know it's ready to re-dry. Chad takes it to work, plugs it in. Anyway, dehumidifiers were about $150 in total. Amazon. Uh, but you can also try Evadry directly on their website. <sighs> I'm exhausted just talking about the winter and all the prep work we did, okay? Um, but you know what? It's been... It's been awesome to say we've survived and we've come through. In regards to cost, this is what everybody wants to know. Well, our, our skirting cost is about $1,000. I had estimated $2,000 before, but that was an error in calculation. So about 1000 bucks with the styrofoam noodles, the window plastic, <laughs> the window plastic failures, um, the skirting, and the spray foam. Sorry if I repeated anything in there, but that's how much it costs for, for that, most of which will be reusable come next year or still be in place, okay? Um, 
all of your cupboards that are behind doors, so that's where you keep your clothes, where you keep your books, wherever your kitchen cabinets, wherever the doors stay closed, you'll want to put that same one inch styrofoam. You'll want to beef up your walls in those spaces. So you'll want to put the styrofoam in fitting perfectly to that space. And then once again, taking the tuck tape and going around and sealing those. That will prevent mold building up on your clothes, your clothes being smelly because they're damp. It will also prevent the big drafts that come in if you have your kitchen cupboards open while you're making dinner. Um, and the good thing about it is you can leave it during the summer too. You don't need to take that down when you move. Okay, so cost for running and living in an RV in the wintertime. Our most expensive month for both propane and hydro was February because of its record temperatures. Our propane was $220. So that's about four propane cylinders that we rent here from the park, uh, 100 pound cylinders. And our hydro is just over 100, I think $123. All the other months, the other like January and December were between 150 to 184 for propane and under $100, about anywhere between 90 and $99 for hydro. So when I add up, winter and summer and to extrapolate it over 12 months we're looking at about a hundred dollars a month for propane and electricity so it's good it's better than a typical house it's not the most fuel efficient and energy efficient home obviously because it's an rv but our next house will be like an r value of 30 and hopefully we'll be able to heat it with a candle so anyway let me see, I'm just making sure I've got everything. Ah, how did my decor finishes stand up to the condensation and the wiping and the dripping water and the mold and all of that, right? The paint that I use, the Valspar paint, uh, which is vinyl specific, is gorgeous. It hasn't peeled, it hasn't flaked, it hasn't faded, frozen, dripping with water, any of that, it's been fine, it's been beautiful. I'm really, really impressed with that paint technology. The wallpaper, um, I think I've indicated this in previous uh, blogs, make sure that you prep your walls using a wallpaper primer. So that's going to make the wall even stickier for the wallpaper. It makes it um, like sandpaper. It, makes it, so, it gives it such a strong tooth. So because I did that, all of our wallpaper is still up. I'm sure you can see it there in the corner. Um, but there are there are a few parts that are separating so the seams some of the seams have come and started to split open um, up along our top line we have a few a uh, few pieces peeling there but you know what when the warm weather hits I'll just bring some of my wallpaper paste and I'll repaste those no problem I'm really impressed with how the wallpaper has uh, endured these temperatures so it, it's not a fail by any stretch it just requires a little bit of TLC as does anything tiny or RV. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed my information. Sorry, I'm always making long blogs, but I want to get you all the information that you need. If you've got any questions, follow me on Facebook at Laura Sauvé Decor Consultant. And if you need help, if you need help with your uh, space to reimagine it, I'm the gal to talk to. Have a great day. Bye for now.